Hey, Ukulele by Ezra Bush. Again, Bruce Campbell will be reading Miles. Miles is 27 years old, he's a scammer. Seth Jarvis will be reading the part of Jerry. Jerry is 31, also a scammer. Police Officer will be read by Roy Cutler. Roy Cutler, uh, the police officer, is also a scammer, 29 years old. And Andrea will be read by the Sarah Vanuker. And Sarah Andrea is 28 years old and is also is this is the scam victim. At Rise, scammers are in a huddle and Andrea is off stage. Okay, guys, I'll take the lead on this one. Uh, when do we come in? Well, I'll get her to call you over, and then after a little while, you know, Jerry can waltz on in to deliver the knockout blow. You know, really annoy the crap out of her. Yeah, and then we split the money three ways, of right? Of course, you moron. Same as last time, except this time, no iguanas. <laughs> no, George, I'm telling you, the toilet had your ukulele in it when I got there. Andrea, no, you're... Andrea sits on bench talking in a thick New York accent, listens to the phone. No, you're right. Yeah, 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 uh-huh. Of course I'm sorry. Look, I'm at the subway. I'll call you back later. Miles sits down next to Andrea. Hello? Hi, I'm Miles, and you are... Now, I'm no English teacher, but I'm fairly certain that in conversation, when someone asks you a question, you answer. You know, this is the problem with this world. Everyone is so wrapped up in Facebook and Twitter, they forget how to communicate. Instead of parents telling their children not to run on railroad tracks, they hand their kids iPads and explain they can jump over orange trains when a green train comes, they should hurdle it. When I was a boy, my parents explained that playing on tracks was dangerous because any color train could turn you into a grease splotch on the tracks. Hmm? Uh, sorry, it's a little confusing to me. When one talks to someone else, doesn't the other person hear them? Shut up! Dude, I am in a terrible mood. Really, really, really? Hey, tell me more. T tell me how you feel. No. no come on, I'm an amateur psychologist. Really? Yeah, Yale certified. I can't believe I'm about to do this. Speak, child. <laughs> you see... It all started yesterday when I went out to dinner with my boyfriends. I ordered the veal, well, he ordered the veal, which smelled like a dead cat that was soaked in the Hudson River and then left to rot in a landfill. Oh, gross. It just smelled so bad. So the point is that when we got home, he wanted to sing. Well, he's a musician. Oh, cool. Well, what's he play? The harpsichord, pan flute, maybe the guitar? The ukulele. Best happy birthday cover you will ever hear. But the point is, is that... He's singing, and his breath stinks. I mean, for every word he sang, he practically spit veal in my face. So I tell him that his breath smells bad like a dead cat in a landfill. That happens to everyone. I totally feel you. <laughs> really? No, of course not. Do you really think anyone else has ever had a dead cat breath boyfriend that sang happy birthday while playing the uke? Well, no, I guess not. Yeah, it's like, guess you're stupid. Now, go on. Uh, so he runs down the hall and brushes his teeth because at this point he knows how bad his breath is. The only problem is that on the way he drops his ukulele. So I pick it up and I try to run to the bathroom and give it to him, but the door's locked. So I have to wait for like an hour while he detoxes his breath. And when he finally opens the door, I run in, still holding the ukulele, but I slip and the ukulele flies out the window. And after I saw that, I decided to jump out the window after it. Luckily, we live on the first floor. Then I land in the alley and I see this guy in a suit holding a uke. When I ask for it back, he refuses, saying, it's been his all along. Bottom line is, I gave him five bucks for it. Then I threw it up through the bathroom window. And then when I got up to the bathroom, the ukulele was in the toilet, and my boyfriend's freaking out, yelling at me about how was Duke's in the toilet. So I ran down to the subway and catch him peace and quiet. <laughs> oh, man, I'm good. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I got you to spill your guts. Well, sure. I mean, you went to Yale for psychology or something. Of course you got. No, no, I mean, just because I took an online course for a month doesn't make me a psychologist. Hang on. I, th I thought you went to Yale. Dude, Yale, as in Young Adults Learning Electronically. It's an acronym, Y-A-L-E. What'd you think I meant? Uh, the, with the college, but that's not important. If you were never a psychologist, what the hell are you doing writing this whole time? Nothing. Makes me look more professional to pretend to take notes. I'm leaving. He stands up and walks to another bench. 
Hello again, my friend. Go away. No. Excuse me? Oh, you are most certainly excused. Why, thank you. Now leave. Ooh, it's our first now. best friend fight. You frighten me. That's why I spent some time in an insane asylum with real psychologists. Officer! Officer, I need some help! Police uh, what, officer walks over. What seems to be the issue, ma'am? This man is completely insane. He's sitting uh, here. Room for one more? This, this man here is, is... If there's a problem with him, it's best to work it out with words. Look, is anyone hurt? Well, no, officer, no one's hurt, but these two... Someone just... is very hurt. Should I call an ambulance? Who is it for? Call an ambulance. This woman has gravely wounded my feelings. <laughs> words hurt more than fists sometimes. He directs this at Andrea. I am done here. Andrea stands up but is pushed back down by the police officer. What are you doing? I'm afraid I can't let you leave until I've made an official report on this situation. That's ridiculous. All I want for is these two to leave me alone. Hey, there's no law against sitting on a bench. He's right. Uh, come on, officer. They're invading my privacy. Hey, if this man wants to sit on a bench, he's allowed to. You, however, are under arrest for wasting police time. What? You have the right to remain silent. You also have the right to give me your credit card number to make me forget about this whole ordeal. Well, uh, all right. All, all right. It's a uh, zero to... Hey, bribing an officer, that'll cost you another $1,000. <gasps> just, just take the whole thing! Andrea throws the wallet on the ground and storms away. Another job well done. He counts through the money. We split it three ways. It's uh, one ten apiece. Well done. Miles takes some money and passes the rest on. Actually, the police officer takes some money and passes the rest on. They all slap high fives. The end. <laughs> <laughs>